This screencast is about Lesson 10b from the book Straightforward Elementary. Uh, it's about uh, capital cities and cities in general, and the main grammar focus is comparative adjectives. You're going to need the students' book pages, which you can see here, and the teachers' book notes, which you can see here. There's a few pages of those. You'll also find the audio script for the um, listening here in the teachers' book notes. And you'll need the language reference. This comes from the back of the book, back of the student's book, and gives you a guide to how much information pre-intermediate students need about comparative adjectives. So you're going to need four different things. The student's book pages, the teacher's book, the language reference, and there's also an audio file for the listening about Giovanni. Let's start talking about that listening and some vocabulary. So the first part brings in these adjectives. So first of all, set the context, show some pictures of, uh, of Rome uh, and ask the students what, they, what, what city they think it is and what they know about it. Tell them that they're going to listen to someone called Giovanni who lives in Rome talking about his city. I think that they're going to need um, uh, to, uh, you're going to need to pre-teach rather uh, a couple of words here. I think historical and polluted are words that the students may not know. So pre-teach those words, maybe give a description and see if you can elicit the word. Uh, for example, um, uh, a place where there is a lot of traffic, a lot of cars and a lot of smoke. We say that is... What's the adjective? Try to elicit it from there. Then let them look at the sentences, read them through one to seven. And then they listen to Giovanni and tick the answers, either yes or no. At the end of the listening, uh, put the students into pairs or get them to discuss as a group what they think the answers are. That will allow you to monitor and to listen and to think, do I need to play it again? Do they have enough um, answers? Have they been successful? And if you think you need to play it again, then do that and then get them again to check in pairs or check together as a group. Then check the answers, yes or no, for those, those items one to, one to seven. Then have a look at exercise three. They can match the words in the box to their opposites in exercise one. No particular problems of meaning here, I don't think, for our students, but I think there are issues of pronunciation. Modern, modern, uh, quiet, quiet. So I think you have an opportunity to do some drilling during the feedback here. And asking how many syllables each of the words is would also be very useful. So, for example, you might say, OK, unfriendly. What does that match to? Yes, friendly from sentence number one. Good. Unfriendly, unfriendly. Everybody say it together. Drill the word and then you can say how many syllables are there? Unfriendly. Three syllables. Good. I would avoid exercises four and five at the moment. You might want to bring them in, but I think we can do more speaking about cities that the students know later on in the lesson. You can see I've moved to the teacher's book notes at this point. Uh, I think it would be a good idea for us to find out what the students know about comparative adjectives rather than just treating them like they know nothing and telling them um, the information. Let's find out what they can do first. It's like a test teach test format. Here's a good idea in the teacher's book, I think, to write the names of two well-known capitals on the board, choose two that are relevant to your students, and get the students to think of five differences between the cities. And hopefully this is going to generate some use of comparative adjectives. You can always prompt the students by telling them what adjectives they could use. Oh, tell me about polluted. Make a sentence with beautiful, for example, and write the sentences that they generate on the board or type them into a Word document or have some pre-prepared on a slide. And they should cover the different rules for the comparative adjectives. 
So you'll have to look at the rules yourself, but you're going to need a one syllable adjective, uh, one with a couple of syllables, things like that. Look at the rules and it'll guide you to what, um, uh, what adjectives you need to include. So make sure you've got clear sentences with examples of the comparative adjectives. Make sure that you elicit the rules. And also, let's do some work on pronunciation as well. So with your sentences, you might have made a sentence that said London is bigger than Cardiff. And notice the pronunciation of than becomes than. OK, so drill some of the sentences that you've produced. Now it's time to move on to practice. So I think there's some good activities here, but I would change them a little bit. So I'm back on the students book now. I think it's a good opportunity now to get them to be making some comparatives of adjectives. So the activity in the blue box is great. I think they can look at the adjectives and write down the comparative forms that will check whether they're fully on top of the rules. OK, so get them to do that alone then maybe check in pairs or as a group, and then some visual feedback. You can't simply do it orally. Spelling is so important here. So make sure that the answers are written on a PowerPoint or on the board or in the chat box so the students can see them and check their spelling. Take your time on that feedback and ask the students why they've made that comparative to check understanding. For example, um, dangerous. What's the comparative, Amir? Uh, more dangerous. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Why is it more dangerous and not dangerouser? And see if Amir knows, can articulate the rule. Good. And then we need some more practice. Exercise two looks interesting, but it does look quite tricky. Doing a gap fill in a text like that can be very challenging, um, which can be a good thing. So decide if that's useful for your learners. I think I'd be ready to move on at this point, so I'd do something else. Let's talk about a different activity. This activity looks like a great way to generate sentences. Um, the only problem I have with it is that perhaps New York and White Plains aren't particularly interesting to our learners. So one idea would be to use this format, but to change the cities uh, to places that are more relevant to your learners and get them to write sentences. Now it'll be the end of the lesson and I think it's important to personalise the, the practice. There is an activity on uh, page 105 which is about skip speaking. It's a nice task but it's not particularly linked uh, to, um, to personalising or the students own hometowns. So I would go back at this stage to this idea over here on page 104, exercise five, work in pairs, choose a city, town or village that you know, interview your partner about his or her city. Great, it's personalized, brilliant, but it needs what we'd call scaffolding. It needs support for the learner. If we throw them in the deep end, yes, they'll have stuff to say, but they may well not use the comparative adjectives, which is what we want them to do. Scaffolding consists of different ideas. It's ways of supporting the learners, basically. One way of providing scaffolding is to give a model or a demonstration, if you like. So you could talk about two cities that you know and compare them. And that will give the students a model of what to do. Another thing you can do is to give prompts. So you could put up topics like weather, people, shops, houses, something like that. And they could use those topics as ways of uh, talking about their city or oh, the weather in um, Cardiff is wetter than the weather in Paris or something like that. You could also give prompts that are um, adjectives. So you could put five adjectives on the board and they would have to make sentences about their two cities using those adjectives. And another way of scaffolding is to give preparation time. So preparation time gives students a chance to think before they speak, because thinking and speaking at the same time is really tricky. Whereas if you get a chance to think first, then the speaking comes more easily. So give them the prompts, 
give them the model and then give them two or three minutes to write some sentences about their cities. Then you can pair the students or put them into groups and get them to tell each other about their cities and ask each other questions as well. It's going to need some really clear instructions, but I think it would be a really worthwhile task. The students will really enjoy um, talking about cities that they know.